Hello, welcome back to three-phase circuit analysis. In this lesson, we're going to talk about real and reactive power in a delta load. Now, in the last two lessons, we talked about the Y load. And we went in great detail there just explaining that it all comes from the general equations of calculating P and Q separately. Then we apply them to the, the loads, and then we sometimes, sometimes have to do a voltage shift in the last lesson to get the equations in terms of the line voltages. So to calculate P and Q and the total power S, the total complex power S in terms of the line voltages. But you can also calculate them in terms of the phase voltages. Now we're going to do the same thing in the delta load. Now if you look here, this is a delta load. It's not drawn as a triangle, but it, it is a delta load if you think about it. AB is kind of one side of the triangle coming off this way. And then this side of the triangle is coming off this way. And then this one is kind of, if you could kind of rotate it, that's the bottom of the triangle. So you have the three legs of the triangle. This is how you would generally schematically draw a delta load. All right. Now notice the way I've got it drawn here is VAB, which is typically a line-to-line -line voltage, because these are the three lines coming out. The line voltage is equal to the phase voltage for a delta load. You know that already. We've done that many times. But the line current, which I haven't drawn coming in here, is different than the phase current going through this load because it branches and splits here. So for the Y load, the currents were the same, line current, phase current were the same, but the, the voltages were different. Line voltage and phase voltage were different, so they required a shift. The symmetrical case is true here. The voltage is the same, line voltage and phase voltage are the same, but the currents are actually the thing that needs to be shifted, and that's why we've been using it all this time. So basically I have each of the different loads, I have the, everything drawn here, VBC and IBC, and here it goes from C back to A and then ICA. So it's just basically drawing a, a reference here. Now the trick is, um, not really a trick, but what I have write, written here, I'm not going to write it down, but basically all of these power equations that we've done, all of them, the P, the Q, the total S, the power per phase, all that stuff, they're all going to look the same for the delta load as they did for the Y load, assuming that we remember to use the phase currents and the phase voltages when we define you know, in the original definition. Okay, so if you haven't watched the last couple of sections, please watch them. Make sure you understand how that derivation proceeded. And then come back to me right now because it'll dovetail into what I'm writing down right here. In other words, it all started with trying to find the power, the real power, let's talk about, on the A phase. So the real power on the A phase, um, basically, is the magnitude of the voltage across this A phase load times the magnitude of the current, of course, an RMS value going through that guy, times the cosine of the difference between the voltage and current, theta V minus theta I, right? So the way we write that is we say VAB magnitude, magnitude IAB. This is the current and the voltage across just phase A load, cosine of theta VAB minus theta I. AB, basically the, the co same cosine here. And this is basically similar for, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write them down, just say board space, the real power for the B phase and the real power for the C phase. Now if you look at this equation, and if you go back to the last couple of lessons and look at the, the power for the A phase, the only real difference between them is how we wrote this stuff down here. Okay. I, I kind of wish I would have left it on the board, but basically we're calculating the power for the A phase as the voltage across that A phase times the current through that A phase load times the cosine of the angle. When it was a Y load, the line current was the same as the phase current, so this was the line current coming in.